Hello everyone. Well, I dug my way down the Watts rabbit hole today. So all of us can try to decide if there were any accomplices on that fateful morning. I'm going to be comparing the walk from the first walk that walked out of the garage before Chris started loading up his truck that morning. So make sure you pay attention because this is going to be a good one. This is the walk I'm talking about. Here it is in slow motion. And here's a close up of slow motion. Now here is walking into the interview room. And slow motion. And walking out of the interview room. And slow motion. Now let's do a replay of those. Now here's Chris at the gas station and slow motion. Now let's compare and replay. Now I'm moving on to Chris's 
movements around the truck that morning. Comparing it and slow motion. Now this part when she leaves I found quite interesting. I didn't notice this before, but she says, you think he's going to take this all the way to trial? And he says, I do right now. She says, have they done the discoveries yet? He says, no, they have some stuff. She says, do you think that's going to change when they get those? And there was not enough time for him to reply back by her next question of, do they know I'm like one of your witnesses? Basically trying to prove her point is that she wants to make sure in their eyes that she's not a suspect. At that time, mm -hmm. if there's anything new, we can talk about it then. Mm -hmm. I do, right now. Yeah. Yeah, some stuff. Do you think that's gonna change when I get those? Do they know that I'm like one of your witnesses? Um, they, yeah, I mean they, they have to know. Do they know what you said yet? No. And for this reason, I wanted to point this out. When Chris walks away from his car door, it looks like he may have shut the door and the lights went out. But then when he's at the back of the truck walking towards the front of the truck, magically that door opens. How did that door get open and those lights turn on if he's in the back? So not only are we suspicious about that first person walking out the garage, because that shouldn't have been the first person walking out of the garage because that camera had to be triggered by other movement for, e for it to even come on. So it's possible Chris had already walked in front of the camera, triggered it, he gets into the truck, 
and then the second person walks out of the garage. I've explained this in my other video. Now we'll slow it down for you. Now these are the screen grabs of these different footsteps so we can see the gates of these human beings, the footstep lengths, the leg lengths, just to compare and see if we notice anything different or similarities. Now this part here is a little bit mind-blowing. So what I did here when the camera was zoomed in I took this ruler and placed it right below that big light right there. And it's obvious that their head is in that light space. And just at the angle of the camera and how far away it is, we can't actually see their heads. But you know damn well we can see those black fucking sweaters. So I took it to the bottom of the light and I brought it down. Now what I want you to focus on is the end of the sweater. And where the arrow is, it's almost down to three inches long on the ruler itself, on the left side photo. And I made the other ruler a little bit lighter, that way I'm not covering up the rest of the black sweater. I'm covering up just lightly over the jeans. Now if you look at the right photo, that black sweater extends a little bit longer, doesn't it? And remember, the photo on the left is when it was dark outside. This was the person walking out of the garage, the very first person that we had seen walking out of the garage. And the photo on the right, as you could tell, it's much brighter because the sun was coming up. This was where Chris was walking to his truck to drive away with his dead family in his truck. So now we know that those sweaters are not the same length. So let's say the person in the left photo has longer legs and a shorter torso than the picture on the right. The picture on the right, this person looks like they have shorter legs and a longer torso and the sweater is stretching down more than the other one. Now in case this whole light setting is a little different, it may be tricky on the eyes and that big old bright light, I'm going to move the ruler over so you can see this at a different angle. Now this one I moved over, I moved the ruler underneath that little white box that's on the wall there. That way in case these people's heads were confusing this light and my ruler that at least I could be more accurate with this little white thing on the wall. So once again, once you drop that down, bring the other ruler in, you can see at the arrow it's pointing at three inches again. And the other one is at four inches. So there's still a big difference in that sweater length. So the question is, is this the same sweater as the first person walking out? Is this the same person that's walking in and out? This is a decision I will leave in your hands. I think you can catch my drift on where I'm going with this. I just thought this was really really important to bring to the public's eye. Now I'm going to give you a little education trip. 
because if you know anything about my channel or my videos that I do on the Watts case, I investigate, I like to learn, I love to bring you guys the facts because it's extremely important to stick to the facts and what we have on hand. And I always like to dig a little bit deeper than anyone else does and bring you guys something else to absorb that the other creators do not. All right, so I used the word gate earlier. Now this gate means the way a person walks. An abnormal gate or gate abnormally occurs when the body system that controls the way a person walks do not function in the usual way. This may happen due to any of the following reasons, illnesses, genetic factors, injury, abnormals in the legs and feet. Now, I don't know if you guys noticed um, by the way Chris Watts walked and the examples that I gave you, but he does kind of have a waddling gait. He does kind of sway his body while he's walking, which is normal for men. I think a lot of men do do that. And don't get that confused with a pregnancy waddle. It's a little bit different. That's not what I'm talking about. So as this says, the waddling gait, as the name suggests, a person with a waddling gait moves from side to side when walking. Waddling involves taking short steps as well as swinging the body. Here's another example, waddling gait, a duck-like walk that may appear in childhood or later in life. Now the foot strike, which I think every different walk and gait in this video that I've showed you is pretty much the same type of foot strike. So it's how the foot contacts the ground, specifically which part of the foot first contacts the ground. So you have the forefoot strike, which is toe to heel, ball of foot lands first. Midfoot strike, which is Heel and ball land simultaneously. And heel strike, which is heel to toe, heel of foot lands, then plantar flexes to ball, which I think in this entire video, um, they all pretty much look like the heel strike. Now this was extremely important for this video and the differences I was trying to show you is that there are gender differences in the human gait patterns. Females tend to walk with smaller step width and more of a pelvic movement. The gait analysis generally takes gender into consideration. Gender differences in human gait can be explored using the demonstration created by Biomotion Laboratory at Queen's University, Kingston, Canada. And if you noticed with NK's um, gait in the interview room, she takes very small steps is what this is referring to. And then Chris Watts takes a very wide steps. Now, some report that males and females walk at the same walking speed, but that females walk with a shorter step length. And some conclude that females walk more slowly than males and have a shorter step length, like I just explained. The significant differences were found in the gait cycle phases, the stance, the swing, the SLS, the DLS, and the foot placement angle. A study by Kerrigan reported that healthy males who walked at the same walking speed as females demonstrated a lower cadence and longer step length than the females. So now that you can understand what the human gait is all about, I'll give you guys another view real quick of the different ones that I showed you earlier and you guys can make up your own minds on whether or not this is one person or two people 
two separate people walking out of the garage that fateful morning. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm really interested in what you guys are going to be saying down in the comment section. And if you agree with me and my video or otherwise. As always, let's keep it respectful down in the comment section. I hope you guys have a great day and thank you for watching.